You're tuned in to Ask the Master Auto Technician. Car questions? Get answers right now. Call 850-763-0555. James Auto Center. We fix it right. Guaranteed. Beep, 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 beep. Yeah. All right, good morning, everybody. It's nice and early in the morning. It's like 6 a.m. My wife put new curtains behind us today. Uh, so we're not using a green screen anymore. We're trying to, uh, I guess, bring our image back into the 21st century here. I don't know, using a green screen is pretty technical, uh, pretty you know, advanced, because you can put any picture you want behind there, uh, just as long as you have a green screen or, or a blue screen or well, whatever. Well, I think you pretty much decided it just time-consuming. It is time-consuming. When you have to render that part of it, you know, you have to take the green screen, uh, you know, add the um, the effect to it to make sure it works like it's supposed to. Then you have to worry about what color shirt you wear. You wear a green shirt with a green screen, you're nothing but a talking head with hands. That's all you are. And make... that's never happened oh, before. Oh, I can't say that's never happened before. I know it's happened before. <laughs> it looked really good till I started putting the production together and went, that ain't going to work. Uh, all, I got, all I am is a talking head with hands that move. Anyway, so I learned a lot about that. So with, a, with not having a green screen, I can wear any color shirt I want to. And I'm thinking Stephen Lang is supposed to be calling because we're going to be trying to start off a uh, used car gems. What I call uh, cars that, uh, you know, they're used cars out there. They're three, four, five, six, seven years old out there. They're really a bargain for what you think, it, you know, what you're going to be paying for them. When they were brand new, they were thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000, but they depreciated so much over the years. And there's a lot of cars out there that, that are great buys that you could be buying, in my opinion, that people overlook. Uh, and here's one, here's an opinion that I have about cars that last, one of the cars that I think is a great bargain is the Lincoln Town Car or the Grand Marquis. Those cars right there that have the full size Ford uh, 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 Crown Victoria or the uh, Lincoln Grand Marquis, those right there are full size cars. They have a 4.6 4 engine, liter engine in it. They get on the highway 26 to 28 miles to a gallon. If you get in an accident, they're pretty darn safe. Uh, you've got a lot of weight, a lot of mass. Hey, and I do have Stephen. He did call this morning. Good morning, Mr. Lang. How are we doing today? Wonderful, wonderful. How are you doing? <laughs> well, we were talking about um, used car gems uh, that people might overlook but, uh, due to their, uh, these cars are very dependable. The price used to be very expensive on the cars, but after they're four or five years old, they've dropped in price, and they're really good buys. And I was mentioning the Grand Marquis and the uh, Crown Victoria. Uh, and I just throw things out there, but I thought maybe you could give us a little, shed a little bit more light on cars that people might be wanting to buy for their children going to college or to high school. Well, thankfully, you're, well, thankfully you're actually at the ground zero of uh, cheap car heaven. <laughs> and one of the reasons is because uh, older folks in general tend to drive fewer miles mm -hmm. uh, than the average uh, driver. And also, the taste. Uh, you know, they still form a nucleus of taste, but unfortunately there is a great divide hmm. uh, between what people used to like and what people like now. Ah. So, long story short, a lot of full-size vans are going to be in that market, a lot of minivans are going to be in that market, and even a lot of brands that are no longer sold uh, in the United States uh, are going to be in that market okay. as well. And I'll give a few examples. Please. In, in terms of full-size sedans, uh, one of my personal favorites is the Buick Park Avenue. And the reason why is because a lot of folks end up getting Park Avenues. First of all, Park Avenue used to be the flagship mm -hmm. of Buick. It used to be the one car that was more expensive than any other car in the Buick line. Correct. And the folks who buy that particular vehicle are more willing to spend money on it, more willing to invest in it, they're more willing to take it to the dealership. Mm -hmm. And that's the kind of thing that you actually want, that you actually want to see mm -hmm. when you are trying to buy a car for a teenager because you know they're going to be a little bit tough on it regardless of how much of an angel they are in front of you. <laughs> you must have known my daughters. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead, sir. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> not personally, not yet. No, no. 40s. <laughs> uh, my, my, one of my daughters sunk a car. She actually was, a, I called her the U-boat commander. Uh, she, <laughs> <laughs> she followed her boyfriend in a four-wheel drive vehicle in her little Pontiac Fiero and sunk it in about four foot of water. And I said, baby, oh, it, ain't, it, it ain't four-wheel it ain't four drive. She said, Dad, I thought I could kind of skip across it. And I said, 
Oh, <laughs> I don't know what to say about you, yeah, darling. You should have had nothing with a periscope. It would have actually probably been a lot more successful for you yeah. than the car. Yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't a very successful used car, the Pontiac Fiero. But go ahead, back to the Buick Park Avenue. They're a flagship of cars, you so to speak, for Buick. Exactly. Buick is a wonderful, uh, wonderful area to look at because there are also a lot of models that Buick had that actually no longer sell in the United States. Uh, the, you know, there is the Buick Century. Mm -hmm. Buick Century sold for decades and decades and decades, but it kind of got intermeshed between mm -hmm. a bunch of other Buick models like the LeSabre and the Regal. So that's right. another model that, that gets overlooked. Also, anything old in its name, like Oldsmobile, yes. tends to be a pr pretty popular opportunity because the last Oldsmobiles were made in 2004, mm. and there's a lot out there with the name Oldsmobile that actually... It doesn't have to be the Oldsmobile minivan. It can be like an Oldsmobile Intrigue, mm -hmm. an Oldsmobile Alero. And those vehicles also uh, can actually, you know, be good deals because you got to hit them where they ain't in the used car market. Ah, I didn't think about that. All right. So these cars are good buys. They've usually been bought mm -hmm. by people that are older clientele that want to put the money in to make sure they keep the maintenance up on them because some of these people probably bought this car to be their last car they're ever going to buy because this is Florida. It's, it's God's waiting room, you know. I mean, you know, I have customers come in here all the time and say, I want this car to last me till the day I die. And I say, how old are you now? And they say, I'm 65. And I go, you want it to last about 40 years? They go, well, I, might, I don't know if I'm going to live that long. I said, well, the way things are going, you'll probably live to be 100 years old, so I'll try my best to keep it alive for you, you know. So <laughs> I don't know if that's the case or not. Well, uh, the big thing is you want to have something that's going to be safe, reliable, and just not too expensive. You don't want to keep the investment to be that high, but you still want to have the safe and reliable parts of the equation. Mm -hmm. And lucky for a lot of folks out there, there are plenty of 10 to 15 year old cars that actually fit that bill to a T. All right. Another thing you can think about is what types of vehicles were the luxurious rental types of vehicles uh, in times past. Oh. In other words, those that had uh, five star safety ratings. But these days are about as popular uh, as, um, well, you know, either one of the political parties, we'll put ah. it that way. <laughs> That unpopular. I had I figured a car with five star safety crash rating would be a very popular used car, but you're saying they're not that popular anymore. Why is that? Well, it's because I'll give you one example. Uh, the Ford Taurus. There was yeah. a time when the Ford Taurus was a very popular car in the United States. It was actually the best selling car in the United States. Right. Yeah. But Ford decided that they want to open the spigot of cheapening the interior and the exterior as much as possible, mm. and because of that. These cars, although they're safe, nobody wants to drive them. They're mm. kind of like the unloved children <laughs> of the automotive world. <laughs> and you can usually get those for, you know, pretty much a song, like two to $3,000. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's kind of a sweet spot as well. But one thing you do want to watch out for, though, in any type of vehicle like this, mm -hmm. is you want to make sure that somebody actually touched the fluid mm. if it's front-wheel drive mm -hmm. at some point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like to make sure the cooling system's good, like the radiator on these Ford Tauruses that always go bad, it seems like. Yep, you're right. The, um, the fact of the matter is there's some owners that really do take care of the fluids. You know, just like you have fluids in your body, the fluids mm -hmm. in your car right. uh, need to be replenished, need to be, need to be monitored. Mm -hmm. And some folks just drive. You know, that, that's the one thing you don't want. Is someone who just drives. Yep, I see that. And only day. does repairs when it's you know you're on the borderline between life and death. You know when you're in the hospital, that's not when you want to have the attention done to yourself. You want to have it done well before so that you never go to the hospital. Yeah. A car is very much the same way. Wait, so one of the, some of the cars out there for people who are looking, kind of putting in a nutshell. We got we got about four or five more minutes left here. Uh, Ford Taurus would be a good car, which is around $2,000 car that uh, used to be a five-star safety rating, but it's kind of cheap on the inside as far as the interior. It's kind of boxy, you might say. And then uh, you've said, like Buick Park Avenues, they were normally bought by people that, well, the top end of the flagship, they're good cars, normally bought by more mature buyer who would take care of it. And then you mentioned, uh, were there a couple more cars you mentioned out there, too, as well? What were the, they, they were good buys for the money? Well, we we'll give you a whole model line right. that may be a good opportunity, okay. and that is Mercury. You know, it used to be that Ford had to beg people 
to put Mercury on that list. <laughs> and it it was the bridge model between uh, Ford and Lincoln. It used to be the the premium the premium Ford brand. Right, right. And unfortunately, due to the fact that Mercury really couldn't find itself, it went out of business. So you have Mercury Milan, you have Mercury Mariner, mm-hmm. you have the Mercury Sable, mm-hmm. you have all these wonderful names that used to mean a little bit of something in the marketplace that no longer do. Mm. And as a result of it, because there are a lot of people, you know, when you're listening to the radio, you hear about, you know, the new GM models, mm-hmm. new Chrysler models, new Toyota models. Yeah. But you never hear about Mercury because they don't sell new cars anymore. I did not know that. I, I was, you know, I, you just taught me something. I did not know Mercury did not make cars anymore. When did this happen? Yep, they are officially uh, temporarily defunct. You know, they... Ford and GM and Chrysler have all these different nameplates. Mm-hmm. They have uh, deep six over the years, and some are good nameplates, and some are bad nameplates. Hmm. You know, you, you probably don't want to give your child a Hummer. Yeah, you, uh, don't give, you don't want to give them. A, you say a Hummer? Is that what you said? Yeah, you don't want to give your child a Hummer. No, not at uh, eight miles to a gallon. No, you don't want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah, so just for the benefit of the other people on the road, so, you know, if they hear some crunching sounds, they actually stop. Yes. You know, that, that, that's a big issue on that. Also, I wouldn't go for a sob just because sobs tend to be their own creatures. Yes, they are. That's and a, they're that, more yes. difficult to work on. Uh, and uh, sometimes I kind of shy away. Uh, from vehicles that were um, too large for a, a given child to drive. Hmm. Uh, you know, it's nice to give them a cheap, cheap car, but you don't want to give them a minivan because mm-hmm. that's just seven seats of trouble right there. Seven and seats minivan. Of, I like that, seven uh, seats of trouble. I, <laughs> they're, 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 now, minivans, don't get me wrong, I think, you know, that for the for the price, I think you can get a, like a 92. I think you were talking about on your Facebook wall a few weeks ago, you had a 92 minivan you paid $200 for and uh, all it needed was an alternator and it's still a good running car but you know I, some a lot of families and a lot of people would love to have a three to four hundred dollar car out there that they could drive as a beater to get them from point a to point b safely and uh, i like those yeah, and if, if you want to turn into a little mini rv and take out the second and third seats right. and put a bed in it hey uh, you, you know th- that actually is part of that two hundred dollar minivan. It didn't come with a second or third row of seats, <laughs> and I'm not sure if the old person who had it had that uh, idea of reviving his love of travel with another person. But you know, long story short, is you don't want to have something that is too out of the box for a child because <laughs> they won't they drive it but they make it a little bit more creative than you want them to be uh, i know when i was that age and i had a, I had a uh, volkswagen bus i turned it into like you said front seat back seat and the back was a bed and all that stuff but hey in the 70s when you're 18 19 years old i thought that was a pretty good idea uh, I guess parents. Mm-hmm. I guess parents learned a lot since the '70s, and don't let their kids have minivans anymore. <laughs> yeah. That's a good thing. Yeah, to do. The, the lifestyle has changed a lot. The glorification of things that probably should be a part of teen culture. Uh, you don't want to revive them. Hey. And the, the funny thing is, you know, there's certain cars out there that are, could be pretty good to do it. Oh, uh, by the way, do not buy a Cadillac for your child. Do not do buy not a what? Buy, do not a buy a Cadillac. Cadillac. Anything Cadillac. with a North Star engine is a kiss of death. Yes, I can. I agree. No argument there. If it's got a North Star engine in it, avoid it like the plague. You run it hot one time, you can throw that car away. Uh, that's a fact. Mm-hmm. That's a fact. Stephen, we got to go. You, can you believe you, you've been on over 13 minutes with me? And I really appreciate you being on here. Can we make this a every Wednesday thing? I'd like for you to let people know about good buys and not so good buys. Because this is what you do on Yahoo, is it not? I mean, you talk about this all the time. Hey. Pretty much. I try to hit them where they ain't. And when it comes to cars, it's a, a big part of my life because, you know, I'm competing against the car maxes and the auto nations of the world. You know, I'm a little Luxembourg competing <laughs> against NATOs. So, I you know, it. I got to pick the right battles. And that's a, that's a big part of my strategy. If people want to know, get up with you and maybe you can give them some advice, whatever. They can reach you at stephenlang.com or, I mean, what is your website or do you have an email address? Oh. 
Very simple email, email address, carselect, C-A-R-S-E-L-E-C-T, carselect at gmail.com. Carselect at gmail.com. Give him a, write him a letter, let him know what you're looking for, get him, give his advice. And, uh, you know, maybe you might want to go up and visit him in, uh, pop, is it, uh, I, uh, some, uh, what did you say, something springs? I can't. Powder springs. Powder no, springs. Just, just a just put deliverance on the GPS. We'll get there. When you hear when you hear banjo, <laughs> when you hear banjo, stop. You know you've gone too far. <laughs> that's, uh, gonna my, that's gonna be my dealership. <laughs> all right, you, all right, Stephen. We'll talk to you next Wednesday. This is James Morris. We'll be right back with Anna Marie Morris and your phone calls. Bye bye now. James Center, we fix it right, guaranteed. Beep 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 beep. Yeah.